Good evening. I'm Charlie Walters. Welcome to Channel 18's live election coverage for the November 2022 race on Nantucket. In the next 30 minutes, you'll be seeing an interview with the winner of the select board race. You'll see three videos. You'll hear commentary. And of course, we'll give you the results of the election. Before I give you those results, a couple of things to warn you about. We will not be covering the uh, uncontested races for obvious reasons. Also, uh, while the select board race and the sheriff's race will reflect Nantucket's votes, they are Nantucket only races, the other results uh, will be giving you only the Nantucket results and those will probably be somewhat different from the district-wide results or the statewide results. So please keep that in mind as I go through these numbers. So without the proverbial further ado, let's go right to those numbers. Uh, first this evening, Island voters using a ballot separate from the statewide general election voted in a special election for the select board seat vacated by Melissa Murphy, who stepped down to go to law school. And the term of this seat, the remaining term of this seat, will last only through next May, when there will be a total of two seats on the regular spring 2023 ballot this was a nonpartisan contest and no party affiliation was listed on this particular ballot. There were five select board candidates and at this hour, NCTV can report that Malcolm McNabb appears to be the winner with 1,390 votes, 30% of the total. Right behind him was Dave Iverson, just 48 votes behind, receiving 1,342 votes, 29% of the total votes cast. Rounding out the field are Cliff Williams, who received 866 votes, or 18.7%, Kathy Richin, who received 752 votes, or 16.2%, and Stephen Payer, who received 97 votes, 2.1%. There were 59 write-in votes for 1.3% of the total, and 129 ballots were left blank. The other race completely up to local voters tonight, meaning Nantucket voters, was for the position of Nantucket County Sheriff. Incumbent James Perlman, a Democrat, appears to be coasting to a third term in office. He received 4,188 votes, 85% of the total. David Aguire, his independent challenger in his second attempt to unseat the sheriff, received 604 votes, or 12.2% of the total. Moving now to district elections, uh, encompassing Nantucket, but not exclusively Nantucket, we will start with the United States House of Representatives, which on the national level is hotly contested between the two dominant parties. The ninth House dis District of Massachusetts, the seat held by Bill Keating, who was seeking his seventh term in office, and the incumbent Democrat received 3,415 votes from Nantucket voters for 69.3%. And businessman Jesse Brown, running as a Republican, captured 1,389 votes for 28.2%. Closer to home, the Massachusetts State Senate seat for the Cape and Islands District has likewise been held by a Democratic incumbent for some time. That incumbent, Julian Sear of Truro, is cruising to re-election among Island voters, receiving 3,344 votes for 67.9%, despite the best efforts of Barnstable mechanic Christopher Lozon, who received 1,462 votes for 29.7%. The Massachusetts State House seat for the Barnstable, Dukes, and Nantucket District has seen little attention in recent years as far as competition goes, with the Democratic incumbent running unopposed in 2018 and in 2020. The same holds true this year, with Dylan Fernandez appearing alone on the ballot, receiving 3,803 votes from Nantucketers, or 77.2% of the total cast. There were 81 write-in votes, and 1,043 ballots were left blank. The final regional office before Iowan voters this evening is the district attorney for the Cape and Iowans district. After 20 years in office, incumbent Republican Michael O'Keefe declined to run for re-election. Fellow Republican Daniel Higgins and Democratic candidate 
Robert Galavois won their respective primaries in September. And at least according to Island voters, Nantucket Island voters, that is, their preference is Galavois with 2,917 votes or 59.2% of the total versus Higgins with 1,844 votes or 37.4% of the total. <clears throat> now to matters before Nantucket voters along with the rest of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts this evening. We start with the governor and lieutenant governor contest, a pair of open seats following the decision of Republican incumbents Charlie Baker and Karen Polito to not seek re-election after two terms in office. At this hour, the Democratic ticket of Maura Healy and Kim Driscoll have the support of 3,246 Nantucket voters, 65.9% of the total, against the Republican ticket of Jeff Deal and Leah Allen, following up with 1,542 votes, 31.3% of the total. Libertarian contenders Kevin Reed and Peter Everett received 86 votes, 1.7% of the total. Up next is State Attorney General, another open seat after two-term incumbent Maura Healey jumped into the aforementioned governor's race. Her party's choice to succeed her, Andrea Campbell, received 3,134 Islander votes for 63.6% of the total, with her Republican rival James McMahon capturing 1,664 votes for 38.8%. The Secretary of State, who is responsible for administering elections in Massachusetts, has been held by Democrat William Galvin since 1995, and he is seeking an eighth consecutive term tonight. He has 3,406 Nantucket votes as of this hour, for 69.1% of the total. He has two opponents, Republican Rayla Campbell, who has 1,314 votes, or 26.7%, and Green Rainbow candidate Juan Sanchez, who has 113 votes or 2.3%. Another longtime incumbent on the ballot is Deb Goldberg, seeking her third term as treasurer. The Democrat has 3,527 votes from Nantucket Islanders, 71.6% of the total, with her only opponent, Libertarian Party nominee Christina Crawford, capturing 915 votes or 18.6%, the best result of any third party contender this evening on Nantucket. Our final contest of the evening is for state auditor with a healthy field of five candidates on the ballot. Another longtime incumbent is stepping down in this cycle with Democrat Suzanne Bump, the first woman to hold the office, retiring after three terms. Her party's nominee to succeed her Diana DiZolio has 2,665 Islander votes, or 54%, with Republican Anthony Amore behind her with 1,564 votes, or 31.7%. Three third party candidates made the ballot, with Green Party candidate Gloria Caballero Roca receiving 161 votes, 3.3%. Libertarian candidate Daniel Reek receiving 130 votes or 2.6%, and Dominic Giannoni as the sole Workers' Party candidate on the ballot, receiving 106 votes or 2.1%. While we had no warrant articles or ballot questions before Island voters this fall locally, there were four state ballot measures to vote yay or nay on today. Question one asked voters to raise taxes on incomes above $1 million to fund education and transportation. Nantucketers voted 2,120 votes, or 47.2%, in favor versus 2,371 votes, or 52.8% opposed. Question two would set new rules for dental insurers, including a requirement that 83 cents of every dollar collected in premiums would be spent on patients' dental work. Nantucket voted 3,149 votes, or 70.1%, in favor, and 1,289 votes, or 29.9%, voted against. Question three would allow chain stores the opportunity to sell beer and wine 
in more locations while limiting their ability to a mass liquor license. Our Grey Lady neighbors voted 1,602 votes or 36.3% in favor versus 28, or rather 2,807 votes or 63.7% opposed. And question four is a referendum to either affirm or annul a bill adopted by the state legislature earlier this year. This would allow driver's licenses for those not residing legally in the United States. The votes on Nantucket were 2,543 in favor and 1,900 votes against, 56.4% to 43.6%. And that wraps up the vote totals. And at this point, we are going to go to the first of three short videos that were made earlier today by Whaler Media. And then I'll be back live in the studio and I will have a pre-taped interview with the winner of the select board race, Malcolm McNabb. Hi, my name is Sebastian and I'll be asking people, why is it important to vote in local elections? Um, because government starts at the local level. That's where most of the issues matter in your community. It's probably more important to vote in local elections than anything to kind of be part of the process and to be part of the community and to make sure that we have great people that represent the island. Local elections are always where you want to start, then you move up to state, and if the state's not helping out, then you go up to federal. And our local elections are very important, and every vote matters. And so every voice needs to be heard, whether uh, it's an important issue or maybe not so important. I think it's important to make our voice heard. We have the right to vote, so I think it's important to exercise it. Why is it important to vote in local elections? Because it's our civic duty to do so. And I'm back live in the studio, and now we're going to show you a, an interview I did about an hour ago with Malcolm McNabb, who was just elected the new select board member on Nantucket. I'm joined now by the winner of today's select board race, Malcolm McNabb. Malcolm, first of all, congratulations on your victory. And second of all, thank you for staying up so late to be with us. Well, thank you, Charlie. I wouldn't, I wouldn't miss this for the world. Good. I, I ran into you last week at a non-political gathering and you were talking about how much you had learned during your campaign over the last few months. And I was wondering if you could talk about that. Well, I've learned a great deal about uh, what people are, think are really important about the island. Uh, and I think today's election, there's, there's another message there. As I understand it, there were 4,400 people turned out. I think I've, that may be a record number. To me, that shows that this island is a special place where people really care about it. And that sort of tells me I'd better do a bit good job at this. So uh, I'm sorry I didn't really get to your question, but I, I just, I had to congratulate the whole island for a tremendous outpouring of, of political interest. Well, you did answer my question, so, I, you know, that's fine. Well, I'm uh, sorry, I'm it's, it's 1030 at night. I, you know, I can't, I can't uh, be perfect. Well, believe me, you did very well and you're doing very well. Uh, I'm curious how long you've had this in mind running for the select board? Well, it started last summer. I, after 12 years on the Board of Health, I felt that was enough time. There was time for new blood and new ideas. And I was looking around, trying to think of what to do. And my son was in town and we took a, uh, a boat out to the links to have a wonderful day. And I noticed something that seemed to have changed since I first started coming here in the early 80s. There were, I could walk to Katu on the boats that were anchored in the harbor. I said, hmm, I mean, that's great. It shows the island is a vibrant island. But what's happening to those, the discharge of those boats? What are their anchors doing to the eel grass? I said, hmm, we need to think about this. I get on the boat. I'm talking to this wonderful woman from New York City uh, who vacations on Nantucket. And I said, what do you do? She says, I'm a school teacher. I said, come to Nantucket if you love it so much. 
we need school teachers. He looks at me and says, Malcolm, I can't afford it. So I said, hmm, there are two issues that we have to deal with. And I said, you know what? I'm going to run for select board. Although a couple people had actually suggested it to me at, at various times. So I decided to take them up on their offer. I'm going to ask you a very unfair question, but if I don't ask it, people are going to ask me why I didn't ask it. Uh, as everyone knows, uh, you just got elected to finish Melissa Murphy's term. She resigned to go to law school and she had six months left on her term. So your term uh, ends in six months. Yes. Uh, will you run again in six months? Absolutely. I mean, a lot of people have supported me, have uh, done a lot of work for me. Uh, I, I, I just can't do this for six months. I'm in, I'm in it for at least three and a half years. Well, I know you've had a very long day. You've had a very long few months, I suspect, and you have an, another long day tomorrow. Tell us what you do tomorrow. Well, I have a, a couple of family things to do in the morning, and I'm, there's a select board tomorrow night. I actually, a few days ago, started uh, reading the uh, various package, and I'm uh, getting ready. And of course, you have to be sworn in first. Yes, I do. I do have to be sworn. I'm, I actually don't know the details of that. I suppose somebody will call me or something. I don't know. Well, again, congratulations. And uh, we wish you the best in your, your six months and perhaps longer. And uh, I'm confident you'll do very well. Well, thank you, Charlie. And uh, just again, I want to thank the uh, Nantucket community because uh, it's just a great place to live. And uh, I'm going to do my best to keep it the way it is and make it better. Thank you. Thank you for joining us tonight. And I am back live in Baybury Court, the NCTV studio. And shortly, we're going to have our two commentators joining me live. But before we go there, we're going to show the second of the three Whaler Media videos. Hello, my name is Vincent. And today, I'll be asking people what they think of the state of our democracy is. Well. Throughout the history of the United States, there have been ups and downs. Um, it's, it's pretty much down right now. I think it's a bit of a mess lately. I'm not satisfied, but I'm just going along with it. There's nothing I can do. We just need a change. Uh, I am very worried about the state of our democracy, and that is another reason to come out and, and make sure you're voting. Um, it's, in a, it's in a dark place nationwide right now, for sure. Too much rhetoric, too much anger. It's sad. Our democracy is slightly in danger right now from people who are trying to undermine the very basis of democracy. But I have faith. I have faith in the concept of democracy. But I have faith that we can bring it back to where it's supposed to be. And I believe in our democracy. Uh, well, the state of democracy right now is possibly in jeopardy. And I think, again, it's important to vote to ensure that we have the choices and the liberties that our forefathers have fought for. I just heard from the guys watching the machines in there that only about 2,500 people have voted so far. I think it should be a lot more than that. We'll see after tonight, see how many people show up to vote. You know, that's what it's all about, getting people out and voting and making sure people feel as though their vote matters, which it does. Welcome back live to the studio. I'm now joined by our two commentators for this evening who will give us comments about the Nantucket results of today's election. Toby Brown has been a longtime member of the Nantucket, of Nantucket's Republican Town Committee. And John Carl McGrady is a Democrat from Nantucket, and he is a Democrat activist. Toby, I'm going to start with you. Uh, did anything in the results leap out at you, strike you in any way? Not totally. I was hoping for maybe a little better results, but I did notice that we did pretty good in turnout. We had, you know, I just because scribbling down numbers, 49% turnout, I think. Is that correct? If my numbers are right, give or take. Um, 2020 election, we had 76%. Uh, Republicans actually didn't do that bad. Would I rather we, you know, done a little better, but I, based on the numbers, I'm not too unhappy. I wish maybe we could get 
you know, a little more turnout on that side. But we did reach our Republican registered voters or Republicans are uh, 1,102. So we did, I think, get our registered Republicans and then some unenrolled and maybe the unenrolled we got to try harder at, I think. Well, a midterm election is almost always going to be have a lower turnout than a presidential election, uh, which I'm sure accounts for most, if not all, of the of the disparity you just mentioned. Uh, John Carl, same question to you. Uh, anything leap out at you? Anything that uh, struck you as surprising or or not surprising? Yeah, well, I think um, a lot of this is really expected. You know, you're on Nantucket, you're in Massachusetts, you kind of know what you're getting for a lot of the races. Um, one thing that I think is really important to highlight is that question four, on the state level, I know it's been re it's really important to a lot of people on our island in particular, and seeing that break in the way that, you know, uh, we really hoped it would break in favor of letting people get driver's licenses, which is absolutely critical for them to get to their jobs. Um, that's a huge deal, and it's really good to see that going that direction. That's the race that I was, like, most closely watching and so I'm really excited to see that. And on top of that, um, I'm also really excited to see Malcolm McNabb winning the select board seat. I think he's a really important voice to have uh, in, in local politics. So that's really good to hear. Uh, as far as all four of those questions go, and I'll, I'll swing this back to you, Toby, before I go back to John Carl. Um, those four questions, how much were, did those become partisan issues, Toby? <coughs> You know, I don't think they should be partisan, but probably number four was partisan and probably number one. I feel like number two and number three were very, uh, to a lot of people, probably didn't, not so important. But I really do feel four and one probably were more partisan. Thankfully, one uh, did get voted down here in Nantucket. I'm not sure about the statewide yet because higher taxes affects everybody. A lot of people think it just only affects the rich and it goes wherever, but it all affects some, some, somebody somewhere. And businesses raise rates when taxes go up. You know, you don't, you don't cut your rates because taxes go up. You, you add that into your accounting. And um, with the inflation these days, that just adds to inflated prices. Uh, John Carl, as a Democrat, did you think that uh, any of those questions was a partisan issue? Yeah, so I would actually say that one, two, and four are all unfortunately, unfortunately partisan. They shouldn't have to be. Um, but so, so one and four, I think, are pretty straightforward. Uh, number, question two is a healthcare question that would tighten regulations on dental insurance companies. And, you know, unfortunately, that is an issue that's become partisan in this country. Um, but no, I think I'm, I'm uh, the results, you know, are, are kind of what you would expect. Uh, let me stick with you, John Carl. Toby brought up the, the matter of turnout. Um, I would hope turnout can be a nonpartisan issue, but let me ask you this. As far as Nantucket goes, how might Nantucket improve voter turnout? You know, that's a really good question. I think that you can do a lot of things that people suggest, should you suggest anywhere. Um, but honestly, turnout's a really, a really tricky issue because it often, uh, oftentimes comes down to how competitive an election is, is a really big factor in turnout. And so when you're in a place like Nantucket in a state like Massachusetts, where those top of the ticket races that attract the most attention are really gonna be non-competitive. Um, and we see a lot of uncontested races even, that's really gonna depress turnout. Like we know people who are just not even running against the opponent or everyone knows who's going to win. It's hard to get turnout high. And that's unfortunate. It's not the way it should be. I think that across the partisan divide, we can all agree that higher turnout is, is generally better. Uh, Toby, to you, um, how do you think we can improve turnout on Nantucket? Well, our, gr our group, uh, our small group of Republicans, um, we just got reestablished, I believe a couple of years ago, just before the COVID or somewhere around that, where you and I had the interview. Um, I really think we made good strides. I think we worked our tail off and we only have a few of us that really, you know, I think there's a lot of conservative minded, Republican minded on the island. Um, but I just, I, you know, and I hate to say it, I, I, I think it's crazy. And I've always said this to anybody, Nantucket is the probably one of the easiest places in the United States to vote. And it's a shame that we shouldn't 
have 90%, excluding the 10% that might've got sick, thinking they were gonna vote. Um, it's too easy. So, so my job now <laughs> as the chairperson is to, is to get our crew back together and say, hey, this isn't over. We gotta regroup. And that's, that's a lot harder than just saying to your friend, hey, take five minutes out of your time and drive by the school and vote. It's, um, it's, it's kind of sad that we, but that's how it is. <laughs> so, but I, I feel like we made great strides. We, we worked hard to get the, get the, get our names out there and, you know, get things somewhat talked about. I had, had a great, great team. So I appreciate them all. We're going to take a short break in this conversation right now so we can show the third of the three videos put together earlier today by Whaler Media. So let's go to that right now and we'll be right back. In this segment, I'll be asking voters what issues are important to them. Oh, that's a huge question. The economy, abortion issues, um, immigration, I mean, yeah, so many key issues going on out there right now. I mean, really kind of everything from the top down to women's rights to health care to everything is important. Well, um, the most important issue to me is the right to choose. Women's, a woman's right to uh, choose uh, what to do with her body. Let's see, uh, gun control. Mm, gun control. And I am a local business owner, so local politics really affects me. Um, I feel like economical and racial equality is at the forefront of uh, the issues I find important. The environment, our beautiful environment here that we're so lucky to have. And globally, I'm worried about climate change and all of that for our precious wildlife and our oceans and for kids like you, students. For me, the most important issues are the environment, both locally and at home, meaning the global environment, as well as housing here where people live. Safety of the island, if we are talking about the island, safety of, safety of the world, really. And I am back, joined via Zoom with by Toby Brown and John Carl McGrady. Nantucket has a, uh, maybe not unique, but it has a uh, often different history of voting compared to the rest of Massachusetts. Uh, when I first started to come here in the 50s and 60s, too young to vote, uh, if you looked at the, the ballots or the, the voting results, it was almost all Republican. But if you looked at party affiliation, there was a huge number of independents. Most of those independents on Nantucket were, were ending up voting Republican. But at the same time, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts was largely Democratic uh, and still is. Uh, Nantucket has also moved in that direction, uh, generally speaking. Um, I, I'm curious what both of you think about the fact that um, Massachusetts has become basically a one party state. Uh, and, and Toby, the way I'll put it to you is if obviously you would like it to be a one party state of Republicans, but my question is, is it a healthy thing to have either party um, controlling the state to the extent that the Democrats are controlling Massachusetts right now? I mean, you're, you're right. I, of course, would love to say have a Republican majority across the board, of course. Um, but no, I do think there should be some balance in politics. I feel like Massachusetts has really gone way to one side. Uh, recent, recently, the, the, the mandates, the school closures, um, even with a Republican governor, and he was popular, but because I think he, he identified with liberal policies and he, he played to get along. Um, but yeah, we, we do need balance, but it shouldn't be the one one side or the other you, in all that. Yeah, I think we need balance. But of course, <laughs> I wouldn't mind if uh, it was a nice, strong Republican majority. Can't lie about that. Uh, John Carl, does it ever make you feel uncomfortable that uh, seemingly everybody who's elected to office in Massachusetts is from the same party? Yeah, so I guess the way I would answer that question is that obviously having an uncompetitive electoral system is not ideal in a democracy. You'd rather have competitive elections between ideologically different uh, politicians who are running on different platforms. But that doesn't necessarily mean Democrats versus Republicans. One thing that Massachusetts could do 
that could potentially foster a competitive uh, electoral environment that we tried to do in the last electoral cycle and failed is into ranked choice voting, which would allow for third parties to become competitive on a state level and potentially unseat Democrats in key constituencies. And I think that's a big ideal for a lot of places to try to move in this direction to allow for electoral competition from people outside of the two party hegemony. And I do think that we want competitive elections, but if everyone in the state is, is leaning left, you know, or not everyone, but the large majority, you're not gonna get it across the left-right divide. You have to try to set out that, that ideological competition within the left using something like ranked choice voting. Uh, John Carl, staying with you, I believe you're living in the Berkshires right now? Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm at college, but yeah. Um, I'm wondering if you see uh, similarities between Nantucket, a small town or not as small as it used to be, and the small towns that are all over the Berkshires. Political yeah, there are, there, there are definitely similarities. Um, there are also differences. I think a big difference is that a lot of the towns out here um, are much lower income than Nantucket tends to be. You don't have a huge millionaire class in like North Adams, for instance, and that does have an impact on the politics. Uh, what about party affiliation out there? Oh, yes, the party affiliation, it's, 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 very, it's very Democrat leaning for Berkshires for sure. Uh, Toby, if I recall correctly, you're from rural Maine? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, mid, mid Maine, yeah. Okay. Um, when you compare where you came from to where you are now, politically speaking, what do you see? Uh, probably where I was, it was, we, we were always Democrat majority, but rural Maine was, was you know, probably 50-50. But I, I really think a lot of people who think conservatively, I say vote Democrat because that's how their dad was and vice versa. And same with Republicans. Sometimes you might hear a Republican say, oh, I'm for this and for that. I'm like, well, this year, actually more leaning with the Democrats. So um, probably, I would say, long story short, um, it's probably a very close, but maybe a little more left here on Nantucket. Uh, and I guess it's worth pointing out that Maine elected um, an independent senator. Yes. Angus King. Yes. I, I can't see that happening in Massachusetts. Yeah. It. Yeah. It's, however, Angus has turned, but he did get a lot of Republican votes, obviously, but he has turned, I think, much more on the left side from what I was following of him back when he first was running um, and same with say Susan Collins and um, I can't remember who is in there now because it's been like trying to not fall into Maine but but they really Susan Collins back in the day was very more conservative and she kind of shifted however the polls went um, and has turned more uh, liberal and vice versa with Olympia Snow who used to we're talking way back now <laughs> Uh, final question for the two of you: uh, Is there anything else? I, is there anything I did not ask you about that you would like to to comment on regarding tonight's today's election? Well, I, I think uh, I, I think um, Attorney General is is really a big Attorney General and Secretary of State are very big. Um, candidates that we and I don't think we focus enough on those I actually would have been a happy if a Republican Attorney General even if it was a Democrat governor and same with the Secretary of State that is a good balance because they, they really focus on a lot of things election laws in, in the law you know we really like Jay McMahon he uh, he focused on the law he didn't want to change anything he wanted to do what the people said not I mean of course, we always get candidates that are going to have their little spin. I'm sure he's like anybody, you get into office and you follow where things are. But his platform was following the law. And I just don't, I wish more people would follow, just kind of pay attention to those races. Uh, John Carl, any concluding thoughts you want to leave us with? Yeah, well, you know, I think um, locally, I'm just, like I said in the beginning, really glad to see Malcolm McNabb getting a select board seat. You talk to people who are running for select board in Nantucket, a lot of times the differences can be really, really obscure. And it can be really hard to tell like what separates one candidate from another. The one issue where you can consistently get large ideological differences 
with local candidates in Nantucket is on offshore wind. And, you know, Malcolm McNabb is a big proponent of offshore wind. And so I'm really glad to see him winning that seat over someone who would be opposed to it uh, to try to push for renewable energy and fight climate change. Toby Brown, John Carl McGrady, thank you very much for joining us, especially so late at night, or I guess now we're early in the morning. We, are, we appreciate your taking the time to, to talk with us. Thank you. Thank you. And before we wrap up, uh, we'll give one more go of um, an, an abbreviated report on the, uh, on the election results from, I guess I have to say yesterday now. Uh, Malcolm McNabb uh, did win the special election to be our new select board member. He will be in office uh, completing Melissa Murphy's term. He'll be there for six months, and then he'll have to make a decision on whether to run again or not. And our incumbent sheriff, the Democrat Jim Perlman, was reelected once again, and uh, he will be there for a while, I guess. And I'm just looking at my teleprompter. Do you want me to give uh, some more results here? I'm, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing the same results. We're going to leave it right there. We're going to stick with the two exclusively local races uh, this year, or this month, I should say. Thank you for joining us uh, last night and this morning. Uh, that does it for tonight's live broadcast of uh, covering the Nantucket election of November 2022. Again, we especially appreciate your staying up late to do this. I'm Charlie Walters on behalf of Nantucket Community Television. Thanks to all of you. Thanks also to Malcolm McNabb, John Carl McGrady, and Toby Brown for joining us in this live broadcast. Try to get some sleep tonight.